Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We're in P5JS and in today's video, we're gonna look at using a buffer canvas as a data source. You can use buffer canvases to determine the color to be drawn, what kind of shapes to draw in certain spots, or what angle to rotate objects. I used buffer canvases to make this art here, though the code for this is somewhat complicated. So to make it easier, I'll be showing you examples that do this, which isn't really art, but it gets the idea across. We'll go through the code and there will be links to the code in the video description. So we're gonna start with this example. If you look at this, you'll see that I'm drawing circles in some spots, black, uh, red triangles in certain spots, and purple squares in certain spots. If I uncomment this image, you'll see the buffer canvas that is supplying the data for those drawings. Uh, let me take the make objects function out and you'll see that all the buffer canvas is doing is doing a black background with some circles. Let me make those circles a little smaller. There we go. So black background, purple circles or red circles. So with the buffer canvas, I'm doing canv equals create graphics width and height. Uh, I've got a for loop with 15 objects. The objects have a random X, a random Y, a random diameter, and then there's a random chance of giving you either a red circle or a purple circle. So pretty simple. So after the buffer canvas function is called, then we're gonna go to the make objects function. So in the make objects function, I've got a for loop that's going to draw 100 objects uh, that also has a random width, random height, random size. But here you see that the color is going to be grabbed from the canvas. It's got canv.getxy. Then I'm gonna fill whatever object it is I'm gonna draw using that color. And then I have some if statements. If the color is black, I'm gonna do a circle. And I don't need to look at the green and the blue, I'm just looking at the red. So if the red is zero, then I draw a circle. If the red is 100, then I'm gonna draw a rectangle. If the red is 200, then I'm gonna draw a triangle. And that's it, that's the whole code. Let's say that I don't want anything drawn where there was black. I could just comment out this circle. So the black circles are gone now, and I'm only drawing objects where there weren't circles drawn on the buffer canvas. Does that make sense? So what can you do with this? Well, let's say you wanted to make a garden scene and you wanted random flowers in one area, you wanted random trees in a different area, and you wanted a random clouds in another area. You could do this to place random objects in certain spots on your canvas. I should note with this example that I used one canvas for both the color and the type of object, but I could have pulled from two different canvases, one canvas supplying the color and the other canvas supplying the type of object. So for instance, it might have said, draw a flower from the type of object, but the color might have said, draw yellow flowers or purple flowers or blue flowers. So with this art, I had a white background with black rectangles. So where the black rectangles showed up, that is where these dots were drawn. And where there's a white background, then the dots were not drawn. Here's another one like that. And here I was doing the same thing, but with circles instead of rectangles. So I drew a circle here and a circle here and another circle here and another circle here. And so that's where these dots were placed. Here's another one like that, and there's another rectangle one, and there's another circle one. Now we'll look at this example, color code drawing flow. This is pulling angles from the buffer canvas. I've actually got uh, two different buffer canvases. So first off, I've got a seed in here so I can show you different examples. Let's do 999 and comment out the random. So here's the final result. Canvas one is a noise canvas. It's just drawing a Perl and noise field. So if I comment out the final drawing and comment in 
the image from Canvas 1. Uh, oh, and it also has some circles on it, but let, let's get rid of those circles. Those are being drawn from the object canvas. So I'll uncomment that. So here we go. This is what the noise canvas function is doing. It's just making a Perlin noise field. So I've got a nested for loop for the width and the height with some gap. Uh, the gap, I believe, is four. I'm calculating a noise value. You could just do noise I times res, J times res. Uh, I like to subtract 0.2 and multiply by 1.5 or 1.6 because I think it gives me a wider representation of the noise. And what I mean by that is if I only do this part right here, I'm going to get mostly uh, numbers between 0.2 and 0.8. But if I do this, then I'm going to get numbers that are between 0 and 1. So then I'm filling with that noise value times 255 because on this canvas I'm in RGB mode so I'm just getting a grayscale between 0 and 255 and I've got some alpha with that and then I draw some rectangles and I finish off with some blur to get rid of the edges of the rectangles. So that's all that is happening with the noise canvas function then we're going to go on to the object canvas function next. Now object canvas is going to be drawing a buffer canvas on canvas number two. So let's take a look at what that is doing. Canvas two, and I have to uncomment the object canvas. So this is all that's happening on canvas two. It's drawing circles. This is where the color is going to be coming from. So let's look at the code for object canvas. I'm switching to HSB mode. I've got a background and I've got my hue going between 90 and 240 just so I can get a somewhat monochrome color that's mostly blues and greens. I call no stroke and then I'm going to draw 10 objects, uh, random height, random width, random size. I'm filling uh, with a random color hue between 90 and 240 and then I draw my circles. The other thing I'm doing in this function is I'm also drawing uh, circles on the canvas number one. So I'm drawing the circles in the same spot, but in this case, instead of filling with a random HSB color, I'm filling with a random RGB grayscale color. And I'm also giving this some alpha because I'm drawing this on top of the noise field and I want uh, you to be able to see both the noise field and the circles. So if we show canvas number one, and let me comment out the noise canvas. So this is what is happening in the object canvas function right here. It's filling these grayscale circles. But if I uncomment out the noise canvas, now I'm getting the noise field plus the grayscale circles. So I've got my two buffer canvases are now complete. Now I can move on to the final drawing. I'll uncomment out the final drawing and we can see what that looks like. So let's go to the final drawing function. So here I'm drawing on the main canvas instead of a buffer canvas. Um, I did stroke cap square. I think it looks better with a flow field to have square instead of rounded uh, lines. I've got a nested for loop for the width and the height with some gap in between the line drawings. Down here you'll see color equals canvas 2.get. So this is the same as the previous example. I'm going to that buffer canvas grabbing the color and that's the color that I'm going to be using to color the circles and the background. Except that I decided to give it a little bit of variation in the colors. Let me comment out all of this and comment this in. And so this is what it would look like if I did not vary the colors. This is just taking whatever the color is on that buffer canvas and bring it in over here. Uh, but that looks kind of boring, so I wanted to spruce it up a bit. So after we grab that color that has an R, G, and B element to it, we pull those R, G, and B elements out, and we add a random Culvery 
uh, which is 15. So if this was, say, a 200 red that I'm pulling from the buffer canvas, uh, this could be 185 that gets drawn here, or 215 that gets drawn here, or somewhere in between. And then the same thing with the green and the blue. So that takes care of the color. Now for the angle. So the angle I'm getting from canvas number one. That was the one with the flow field and the grayscale circles. So I've called that angle color. I'm grabbing that color. Uh, I'm looking at just the red value. I don't need to look at all the colors because it's just a grayscale. I'm dividing by 255 because that grayscale is going to be between 0 and 255. And then I multiply by pi times 2. Because if I want an angle, it's going to be between 0 and pi times 2. So when I take that angle color that's going to be between 0 and 255 and I divide by 255, I'm going to get a number between 0 and 1. And then I multiply that by pi times 2. So that's going to give me angles between 0 and pi times 2. So now I'm going to push. I'm going to translate to i comma j. I'm going to rotate by that angle. So now I'm going to draw my line from 0, 0, because I've translated, to gap times 6, comma 0. My height doesn't change. All I'm doing is drawing a straight line. Uh, and then I pop. So that's pretty much it. But uh, let's take a look. Uh, right here, we've got a line that's going straight up and down. And here we've got a line that's going straight across. Let's look at the grayscale for this and this and see what those look like. So the straight up and down was from right here, which is fairly white. And the side to side was right here, which was fairly dark. Now here's an area that is something in between this and this. So what does this gray look like? That's giving a diagonal angle. So you can see that this could be useful. What's nice about drawing on this one canvas with alpha is that the flow, if you look at this, like this circle here, uh, is not just going in one direction. It's got a curving here. See, if I get rid of the noise canvas, then you get something like this, where the lines of these circles are all straight. These are all straight. These are all straight. This is a little different right here because both of these circles have alpha uh, and they're on top of each other. But when we put the noise back, we get the color from the circles and the noise and we get some variation on these circles. I'm going to show you a few examples, but I'm not going to go through the code because uh, the examples I'm going to show you now are more advanced. I'm going to show you these in a future video. So this example shows a more advanced flow field and let me show you the image from uh, Canvas 4. So in Canvas 4, I made arcs, uh, starting with a low red to a high red, uh, and it gives me something like this, so that when I draw my image, it's pulling different angles as it goes around. Now, this isn't great. It's got this line here, uh, but it does give you a, an example of what you can do with a buffer canvas. Let me show you a different example. Uh, with this buffer canvas, I've got some rectangles. Again, this is a more advanced flow field, but the buffer canvas is pretty much the same thing. I've got rectangles on my buffer canvas that have color, and another buffer canvas that has a grayscale and it's providing the angle for the flow. So I'll comment out my final drawing, comment in that drawing and you can see there's a noise field in here and some grayscale rectangles. Canvas 2 is just the rectangles and Can by itself is just the colored rectangles. This is another example using a buffer canvas. Here I've drawn some circles and a flower, a large flower. This is what the colored flower looks like on the buffer canvas. So that's all I wanted to go over with you today. In a future video, I'll show you how I did those example flow fields. But I hope this information about using buffer canvases has been helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. I love to read your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.
Steve's Makerspace.